that. And I. Hello. Uh, welcome to uh, Dylan's Delight. Uh, I am Andy Jones, uh, the content editor for Plaid's online education program. And this evening, we are uh, being moderated by none other than Dylan Estes, who is uh, one of our uh, videographers here at Plaid. So welcome, Dylan. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Hello. And just want to let everyone know that um, uh, tonight's uh, campus is kind of a, a little, uh, it's just kind of a funny little thing we have going on here at Plaid. Dylan thinks that I paint too many hydrangeas. And so I specifically painted this and he's here moderating. So it's fun that he's going to be with us painting a hydrangea painting. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to uh, climb up on a soapbox for just a minute uh, as we are getting settled. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what we're going to be doing on our uh, canvas. We are painting kind of a, a very loosely rendered uh, collection of hydrangea blossoms. And we've also got three large hydrangea leaves. And the first thing that I want to start getting set in your mind is that when I say don't have much paint on the brush, chances are you all will have way too much paint on your brush. So you're gonna to need to really remember that almost no paint is going to be too much. All right, so we've got that uh, in our heads. So we're going to actually begin our painting uh, by painting our three big leaves, and then we'll paint our hydrangea flowers on them. And I'm gonna show you kind of how to sketch your design onto your canvas. And I'm going to sketch mine on using a piece of uh, chalk. And when I am using chalk to sketch on a design, you wanna make sure to use the cheapest chalk that you can find. Um, just don't get dustless chalk. You want the dust. All right, so the first item on the canvas is a hydrangea cluster that's over here on the left lower side of the canvas. And that's about as big as a fist. So let's just put our fist down and give us an idea about where that hydrangea cluster is over here. And then we're gonna move up from that and I'm going to imagine drawing a big Valentine heart. So that's gonna be a leaf. And then I'm gonna do another Valentine heart down here. So that's another leaf. And they don't look anything like leaves right now and that's perfectly fine because these are just a suggestion about where our leaves are going. So we're going to put in another hydrangea cluster here. And then we've got another little bit of a hydrangea above this leaf. And notice that I am not sketching out a circle on here. These hydrangeas have to have very interesting edges to them. So no uh, round puffs of hydrangeas. These are all a little bit uh, messier. And we're gonna do another Valentine heart. And we've got another little bit of hydrangeas over here. And some more hydrangeas over here. All right, so this is what I am going to have to work with. So I'm gonna give you just a moment to uh, kind of sketch on uh, your design there. So we've got three hearts and one, two, three, four, five clusters of hydrangeas. Andy, you can move pretty quick. Our uh, audience is slim tonight. Okay. <laughs> Just that's an FYI. Fine. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Um, of course, I can't see what I'm doing uh, on my monitor. 
So uh, if you can help me out with that, Dylan, I'm going to start putting out uh, some paint on my palette. So I'm going to start out with some um, sunny yellow, a little lime green, some light lavender, Okay. All right. So I put out light lavender. I'm also going to put out a little apple red. And we are going to have a little color theory lesson to get us going. All right. So I want to make a very light uh, green color, and then we're going to reduce the intensity of that green color. So I'm using my palette knife and I'm starting out with some sunny yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of lime green to that so that we've got a pretty bright green color going on. Now, most of you are familiar with uh, color theory that has primaries of red, yellow, and blue. You know, that's a traditional uh, color system. And there is another system which is much more technical and scientific that's called the Munsell system. And we're not going into that, but Munsell has five primary colors. And one of the principles of the Munsell system are what are called false pairs. And it happens that green and purple are a false pair. So I'm gonna take some of my purple here, which is light lavender and I'm gonna mix some of my lavender into my green. And that is going to make my green a much softer color. And you may be looking at your screen going, that color doesn't look soft yet. Well, give me a second, because I'm gonna add some more light lavender to this. Better to add it in small increments than to add too much all at once. All right, that has really reduced what is called the chroma or the uh, how bright or dull a color is. So my chroma has been reduced, which I'm liking very much. And that's gonna rest much easier on this black background than the brighter green that we started with. But I'm going to take a little bit of this color and set it aside. So I want you to do that same thing. So give you a moment to get this green color mixed up because we don't want to lose people before we even get going. And then we are going to actually begin our painting using our uh, flexible blade metal palette knife. And we are going to see who can use less paint because I'm gonna start off telling you don't use much paint and then we'll find out pretty quickly who needs a little less paint. Okay, I guess we are going to go ahead and move on now and start painting our leaves. So what I'm going to do is this is the back side of my palette knife and I'm going to tap it into my puddle of paint and I'm gonna move over here on my palette and begin to kind of tap that bit of paint that I picked up so that I'm distributing it on my palette knife and really kind of taking any excess off. So there's a very small amount of paint. So I'm going to start on this lower leaf and I want to make sure that I really don't paint the back of the leaf where its uh, stem would be or where it's going underneath this cluster of um, hydrangea flowers. So I'm gonna turn my canvas around and I'm gonna start at the tip and I'm going to just kind of stroke and kind of let this paint, you can see how it's really sputtering off of my palette knife. If you are able to create a big smear of color, you have too much paint on your palette knife. So I'm gonna come back to this 
little area where I tapped it off and I'm going to pick up a little more paint and put a little bit more out here at the end of the leaf. And better to need to pick up a lot of paint or pick up paint multiple times than to have too much paint on your brush when you get started. So again, we're picking up a little bit of paint to help enhance this leaf, but there is still precious little paint on my palette knife. If I were to move up here to this next leaf, see there's just not any paint coming off there because we don't have too much paint on our palette knife. All right, so back over here and we're dabbing that color off and I'm going to come back to this leaf and just enhance that bit by bit, adding a little bit of color at a time. Now, some of you will love doing this with a palette knife and some of you will hate doing it with a palette knife, but the palette knife is the only way to get these kind of marks on your painting. And it's a very nice kind of, um, very painterly kind of very abstracted way to create a leaf. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of titanium white to my palette because I want to develop a little highlight on that leaf. And what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of my sunny yellow and tap that on my palette, pick up a little bit of the titanium white and tap that on the palette and pick up a little bit of my green mixture and tap that on the palette. So by tapping it on the palette, I can't be scooping up too much paint. And I'm, what I'm going to do now is just break the edge just to get a tiny little roll of paint on the edge of the palette knife. And I'm going to lay the palette knife down on my leaf. And you can see I've just really quickly laid on a highlight there on that leaf. Once again, I can tap my palette knife into the puddle of paint and then just scrape and get the tiniest little roll of paint. And if I need to, I can come back and brighten that highlight up or add a little bit on the opposite side of the leaf, just like that. And I'm going to call this leaf done. I know that's a lot to take in right off the bat. But you've gotten practice in now on this leaf, and our leaf is already shaded at the back edge because there's no paint there. So I didn't have to work very hard to create that kind of shading on our leaf. Don't worry, we're going to come back and add some extra shading. But right now, that's where we are. All right, so I'm going to take my green color again and pick some up on my the back side of my palette knife and tap, tap, tap on the palette. And I'm going to, again, turn my leaf upside down because I want the lighter color at the end of the leaf and I want this back edge not to be painted. So we'll put our palette knife down and we'll just kind of work some of that green color on the leaf. And we'll pick up a little more paint and tap, tap, tap on the palette. And we'll put some of this green paint on. And if I need to, can go back and pick up a little more paint. It's easier to add more paint and you can keep adding more paint till it looks exactly the way you want it to. But if you start with too much paint, you, you can't go back and take that off of your painting. All right, you can, but it's more trouble than it's worth. So less paint on your palette knife is the way to go. All right, so you can see how I have now got more paint at the tip and it just fades back and I've got a lovely um, leaf form starting there. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe my palette knife off and I'm gonna come back into this mixture of white, sunny yellow and some of my green. And I'm going to pick up a little tiny roll on the edge of the palette knife. And I'm going to start over here 
okay, let's do the center vein. Just put in the center vein and sweep that color to the right side of the leaf. And we can repeat that if we want to just make the highlight stronger. And then we'll put a little light color over here on the opposite side of our leaf. Okay, I am really happy with the way that leaf has turned out. And I'm trying to get this so that you can really see what I've done. All right, Dylan, do we have any questions so far? We do not have any questions, but you're okay. doing good. All right, now let's add a little drop of black onto our palette. You are not going to need much of this black paint at all. All right, so remember when we took some of our green aside, we're going to darken this green or we're going to create a shade of green. So giving you some more uh, technical art vocabulary. When you add black to a color, you create a shade of that color. Doesn't matter what color, but when you add black to it, you create a shade of it. If you add white to a color, you create a tint of that color. Doesn't matter what color, when you add white, it is a tint. Now, you've probably heard the word tone, and the big three things with color are tint, tone, and shade. So I'm creating a shade of green here, and I took this green, and when I added uh, my purple to it, I toned that down. So a tone of a color is any color to which you have added a second color to reduce the intensity or reduce the chroma of that paint. So we have a tint of green, a shade of green, and a green that has been toned down. So we've got the trifecta of uh, things that you can do with colors going on here. And I like to sneak some of that uh, fun information in for you. Because even though we're having a great time painting, you can still learn something. All right, so I picked up a little bit of my uh, darker green shade and I'm tapping that on my palette. And we are going to start at the tip of this leaf up here. And I am just adding bits of green to the leaf shape. And you can see very easily that this leaf is much darker than these leaves. Because one little principle that I like to share with all of my classes is that you don't want anything, or if you're painting more than one thing, they should not be the same size. They should not be the same color. And they should not be the same distance apart. So if you can always remember never the same size, never the same shape, and never the same distance apart. That will always make your paintings much more enjoyable for the viewer. And I'm gonna have to get to needle pointing that on a pillow. <laughs> All right, so picking up some more of my uh, initial green color, which is now gonna be a highlight color because my base of my leaf was much darker, I'm going to put on kind of the center vein area of this leaf and just kind of smear that over to the right hand side and bring that up for you to see. And we're going to do that again. And painting like this, I will tell you, it really helps if you uh, are not a perfectionist. If you are a perfectionist who loves detail, this is not going to be a pleasant experience for you. You have to kind of uh, just let loose and realize that um, happy accidents are going to happen and that's how your painting uh, is just gonna kind of come together. But if you are trying to make 
something happened, I can assure you whatever you want to happen is absolutely not going to happen. All right, so there we have our three leaves done and I'm gonna take a dryer to them and dry them out. Okay, now, for those of you who were in agony because we were using the palette knife, I'm going to set my palette knife aside and we are going to uh, pick up a number 12 flat brush. And I am going to dampen my brush and blot the excess off on my shop towel. I'm going to pick up some of this darker shade of green and add a little bit more black to that. So it's really a very dark uh, shade now. And I'm gonna take my brush just a tiny bit of the light lavender. And what we're going to do is kind of tap and dab a little bit of this grayish green color on to our leaf. And I'm gonna show you this up close so you can see what it looks like. All right, I think you can see where that's dabbed on. And that's actually just adding like a darker uh, color there because I don't want it to be solid black underneath there, but I'm absolutely not putting much paint on, nor am I trying to blend anything in. Kind of tap and dab very loosely with precious little paint on my brush. So go ahead and load your brush up and tap some of this darkness on toward the back of your leaves. And we're doing the same thing on all three leaves. And if some goes a little bit off the leaf, that's perfectly fine. Doesn't have to stay within the lines. It's one of those lovely things about creating a painting. The lines are the only lines you create yourself. Nobody else is in charge of the lines in your painting. Okay, give you just another minute to catch up with that. And then we're gonna start on our hydrangea clusters. And Dylan's been looking forward to this all day long. So exciting. I wonder what color they'll be. Well, that's, you know, every time you plant a hydrangea bush, that's the question you ask yourself. And the answer to that is it all depends on the um, pH of your soil. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, change the pH of your soil and adjust your flowers from pink to blue. So we're going to do four um, kind of blue clusters and one more pink lavender cluster. So I'm putting a little bit of Brilliant Ultramarine out on my palette. And I might as well go ahead and put out a little Calypso Sky. Andy, I can't help but notice this is kind of ironic. Something must have gone wrong because we had over 500 signups for this class. Um, and now I'm the only one that gets to watch it. But <laughs> I, I assume that we will, uh, they'll still post this and the people that signed up will still get to watch. The okay, class. so we're, we're just gonna plow ahead. So I'm gonna teach you, Dylan, how to bake these hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna start and we're gonna work on all four of our blue, more the clusters that are more blue. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my ultramarine blue on my brush and I'm going to add a tiny bit of apple red to that and pick up a bit of 
Calypso sky, so it's not quite so dark. All right, now, when I say not much paint on the brush, I'm going to just put my brush down and just make a mark across the canvas so you can see how much paint was on my brush. All right, do you see that it did not even cover the canvas? That's exactly the amount of paint that we want on our brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dance from corner to corner of the brush, tapping down one corner and then rocking the brush back on the other corner. And notice that I'm holding the brush back at the end of the handle. Basically, if you want to put the handle in the palm of your hand and grasp it like that, you can begin to add this kind of bluish color to the flower form. And you want to make sure that you've got an interesting outside shape. You definitely do not want a round kind of powder puff or cotton ball shape to this. All right, now you can see I just changed color a little bit, probably picked up a little bit more Calypso Sky there, but you can still see that it is lots of black canvas showing through. And we are tapping and dabbing, kind of dancing this on. I don't want to fill this in completely because I'm going to move on to another uh, little cluster and we are going to move around the canvas, picking up again our apple red, calypso sky, and brilliant ultramarine. And not too much paint, but we will dab this on and create a very nice outside edge. And the inside color is not covering the canvas, but you can see that I'm moving from one corner to the other corner picking up paint only when I am out of all paint. And I think this is where a lot of people tend to overpaint their hydrangeas. They start with a lot of paint and they cover up a lot of the canvas. And then as they continue to paint, they just keep mounding paint on. And we want this to be very loose and ethereal. So again, ultramarine blue, little apple red, little calypso sky. And making sure that that outside shape is interesting for your viewer. I know a lot of you who have painted a while are Take an art class as you hear teachers talking about, uh, you know, the shape of things. Make sure that you paint them big shapes first and, you know, color in masses. And all of those are great things. I just want you to remember that the outside of your flowers should not be round and should be something that's pretty interesting for somebody who's looking at your painting because, you know, you're painting for the enjoyment of it, but it's also, you know, other people are going to be looking at what you've done to make it something worth looking at. And because I'm brush mixing, I'm getting a slightly different color every time. And I just thought I had too much paint on my brush. So I'm wiping some of that off. And then we'll come back and we'll tap and dab a little bit of that color on, and then we'll come over here and do this little cluster over here. And I'm not trying to paint the individual uh, flowerets that make up the big overall cluster of the hydrangea. There are hundreds of little tiny flowers that compose one of these kind of big clusters of the hydrangea. And we want to paint the idea of the big cluster of hydrangeas without trying to paint each and every little petal there. Let's switch over 
can pick up a bit more of our light lavender. And let's add a little bit of apple red to that. And so this is going to create our purpley violet color. And again, don't want too much paint on a brush. I'm going to take some of that excess off. And you can see very easily that this is a different color going on here. So we've got that excitement factor that we're creating something a little different. And this is more interesting to the viewer than having all of the hydrangeas exactly the same uh, color. Because nobody wants that, do they, Dylan? Couldn't have that. No, absolutely not. The painting's going to have your name in it. It's got to be interesting, right? Okay. Rough around the edges. Yes. All right. And you could see that, you know, this has variation in it. Uh, when I picked up the last little brush load, I had a bit more of the apple red in it. So I've got a bit more of the uh, the pink color going on in there. And it's, you know, it's up to you how uh, you uh, change these colors, but you definitely don't want everything to be the same because that is absolutely no fun at all. All right, so we have five uh, clusters of hydrangea well underway. So what I'm going to do next is begin to develop masses of lighter areas in our flowers. So we're going to lighten our color up and we're going to add a bit more color to uh, our brush, a bit more paint on our brush. So we're going to start with uh, the colors that we used to get our undercoat on. And this is all dry. So you know there wasn't much paint on there at all. I didn't have to wait for it to dry. I didn't have to dry it with the uh, hair dryer. All right, so ultramarine blue, light lavender, touch of apple red, and some calypso sky. So we've got a pretty color going on here. Still don't want much paint on the brush, but a little more than we had before. And you can see as I do the same maneuvering with the brush, tapping with one corner and kind of letting it roll over to the other corner as I'm working across the hydrangeas. All right, and so what I want to begin doing right now, even at this stage, I want to make this area of my hydrangea lighter. So you can see I'm putting more paint on and this area is starting to look lighter than it does over here. So that, that's gonna be a light area and this is going to be a light area out here. So you see just by adding more paint, we're covering up more of the black canvas and it makes our flower look lighter. There's a lot going on, even though we're not really doing any difficult painting. Rolling the brush in your hand as you tap with it is definitely not the hardest way to paint something. And I'm going to make this area here a little bit lighter as well. So just continue to tap and dab. And I'm going to bring this up so you can see. But we've got lighter area, lighter area, lighter area. And then there is darkness or darker in between those areas. So that's kind of building up the dimension in our flowers. A lot to remember. And the most important thing is to not use much paint. If you started globbing paint on here, I mean, you can paint hydrangeas using tons of paint. But this way, I think it's easier um, it's like seasoning food. You can always come back and add a little salt and pepper if you want, but if you've got too much salt on something, it's just salty and you're, you, you've got nowhere to go. All right, so taking the excess paint off my brush, I'm going to come right back down here and dab a little bit of this lighter color. I've got a little bit more Calypso Sky in the brush and a bit more paint going on the canvas, uh -huh. and you can see very easily 
how we now have some stronger areas of paint. I hope that's showing up well uh, for you all to see that. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some more light lavender and not, not mixing it in with my blue. This is just going to be the light lavender and whatever was in my brush, which wasn't much paint. And we're going to begin to dab and tap some of this on, rolling the brush as I go. And you can see that we have more light areas established. And these are a slightly different color. If I want, I can come back and add even more of the light lavender and maybe just add a little apple red to that. And again, not much paint on the brush, but come back and you can see that we can add kind of pink tones to our little flower cluster there. Okay, it's time to move on. We're gonna move on to our um, more pink hydrangea cluster there. And I'm gonna start with more of my light lavender. And I'm going to go ahead and pink that up with a little bit of apple red. Make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. And we'll make the top area and this edge over here. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about this edge and making sure that it is interesting by having little light and dark bits showing up there. Bring some of this lighter color down toward the front of my flower. You can make a little lighter area over here. And one reason that I actually really love to paint hydrangeas is it's a very kind of zen feeling. You can have your music blasting. You can just relax and enjoy the process of kind of tapping this color on. And as you do that, you will start to look at your flower and be like, oh, there needs to be a little bit of a light area there. Let me add some color there or I've got this area that over here needs some attention and I'm liking what's going on there. So you can really start to play with your uh, painting and just create the light and dark areas so that they are pleasing to the eye. Because as we all know, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. And you want to have that be the way you think about your paintings. So let's just keep going with some of this pinky purple color, lightening up our flower as we go, making sure that those outside edges are very interesting and not a round cotton ball. All right, so we've got some other flowers. We're going to go back. I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I'm not cleaning my brush because it's nice to carry some of that color throughout the painting. So again, ultramarine blue, and you can paint your hydrangeas with all different kinds of colors. If you've got some of the folk art multi-surface paint, uh, there's a beautiful Prussian blue that you could use, which is incredibly intense. Uh, love the Calypso sky. You could use aqua. You could use patina. You could use castaway. All different kinds of colors, and they will all yield beautiful hydrangeas but slightly different one from the other. All right, let's lighten this up. I've got a lighter color on my brush and I'm using light pressure, letting some of that paint come off. And we're just dabbing these in the corners of our brush. See how far back on the handle I'm holding that brush. If you try to do this, holding your brush like a pencil, you will have the most rigid, um, uncomfortable looking hydrangeas you can imagine. They want to be free and very loosely organized. Everybody wants hydrangeas that are stiff and rigid. All right, so just picked up a little bit more of the light lavender and we're adding some more light color on to this particular cluster of flowers.
and I'm thinking that I have a little much paint on my brush, so I'm going to take some of the excess off. Don't, when you see a problem, like I just noticed I had a little too much paint, don't imagine that it's going to just, that problem is not going to correct itself. You are going to have to take some action and change something. All right, I'm thinking that's looking pretty good right now. It looks uh, that there are some lighter areas and darker areas within that cluster of flowers, and that's what we're looking for some variation and some variety. All right, picked up some more light lilac, not light lavender, sorry about that. And I'm just brush mixing that here on my palette. Adding in a little bit of apple red there. Taking the excess paint off because I'm sure there was too much paint there. And then I'm gonna start down here and I want this to be lighter and brighter out here at the edge where it's overlapping that leaf. And I'm going to carry some of that color into this flower and bring that back down over here, rolling the brush, tapping on the corners, creating interesting outside edges of the cluster of flowers, making sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. And we just continue to create the light and dark areas on our hydrangea cluster. And it's very deceptive when you just glance at a painting like this that you think, oh, one color's just been dabbed on there. But there's quite a bit of uh, differences in colors and relating those colors to other parts of the painting. I could come down here and add some of that down there or even bring a little bit of that up here so that our flower clusters all start to relate to one another, even though they are separate. They're related, maybe not first cousins, but cousins somewhere down the line. Okay, some more light lavender, and we're going back to this cluster of flowers here, and we are accenting our lighter areas of this cluster. And we continue to do that, dancing our brush back and forth from corner to corner. And I am not at all trying to paint individual petals. I'm adding some areas of light and dark, some dabs of color, but never trying to paint an individual flower petal. That is not what we are after here. We want to give people the impression that we have really killed ourselves to paint all of these little uh, flowers, and we are not doing that. We are having fun creating these beautiful blooms, but we are not giving in to any sort of detail. As one of my mentors says, uh, paint the dog, don't paint the fleas. And so that's what we're doing here. We are just giving you the necessary information to understand what's going on here with the painting, but we're not burdening you with a lot of extraneous information that you, one, don't want, and two, don't need. Okay, we are going to begin to lighten up this one last little area of flowers over here, but we haven't done anything except gotten our initial color on to establish the flower form. So some Calypso sky, some ultramarine blue. I could go back and add in some um, light lavender, which we will do in just a moment, but I want to get some of these lighter areas put on this cluster of flowers here. And I'm not going to do much more to this one because we want to keep it a little bit um, different, maybe a little bit darker. I will pick up a little light lavender and we'll come back and add a little bit onto this one just so that we can relate it to the other flower clusters. And then here we go with moving this color around in our painting. 
All right, so now we are kind of having our flowers uh, and these look different than these do and that's absolutely fine. I, in fact, I think it's much nicer. Uh, I don't know how people paint the same painting more than once. Every time I paint something, it's a little bit different and I, you know, I just can't duplicate things, but you know, that's the way I feel job. about it. Do what? You did a pretty good job. It's it's a similar painting, but there are quite you know there are quite some quite a few differences, mm -hmm. and that's that's perfectly fine with me. So I've got light lavender on the brush, and I'm just tapping some of that on, and we just continue to cover more of the black canvas, so it's everything's getting just a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter, without you know having really changed any of our colors yet there's some more to come but every time i'm tapping and dabbing some paint on i want to make sure that it's interesting to look at all right let's go ahead and start to really actually lighten some of our flowers with lighter colors so i'm picking up a little bit of titanium white and i'm mixing that in with some light lavender taking the excess paint off the brush and we will where we have light areas we will accent those don't put this lighter color where you have dark uh, in your cluster of flowers that will defeat the purpose you can see how quickly this really does bring those lighter areas uh, to the foreground and really heighten the light areas to make the flowers look like they have more dimension. All right, let's take some Calypso Sky by itself and then add that in with a little bit of light lavender and white. Take the excess paint off our brush and we can add some of this lighter blue color. I want a little more Calypso Sky to make it a little bit different so that we get some of that kind of aqua color here and there in our flowers. And it's really fun that all of these blues and purples really look good together and you don't have to worry about, you know, one of the colors not, not going, as they say, not being, uh, not playing nicely with its neighbors. If we were to be using a lot of different kind of colors, um, you can get into some trouble that way, but we've got a fairly limited amount of blues and purples on our palette. So everything's going to look good without a lot of effort, even if you mix and change colors. All right, see how we are just adding more and more light areas and we get these great looking uh, dimensional kind of uh, puffy flowers. So let me bring this up so that you all can get a good look at what I've actually done. And it's a lot of tapping, a lot of dabbing, and a lot of subtle uh, color changes. But notice that we don't have any round powder puff flower heads. All right, let's add the one little bit of deep, and you can play with this until you've played with it too much. Um, and how do you know when to stop? Well, you stop, the best way I can tell you when you need to stop uh, adding paint or playing with a painting is when you reach the point of the painting and you say to yourself, oh, it just needs, that's when it doesn't need anything else. If you think it needs just one more or it needs just a little, that is the time to say to yourself, artist, you think it needs one more little bit of this or that. And if you put that little bit on, chances are you're going to mess everything up. So don't, when you think you need one more little bit of something, stop, leave it alone. You'll be much happier. All right. So we've got some little tendrils uh, that we are going to add. And I hydrangeas do not have tendrils but it's going to help loosen up our design and look very pretty. So I'm gonna take some of that uh, 
darker shade of green and I am thinning it down with just some water. And you want your paint to be thin so that it flows off the brush. Um, I think sometimes people call it an ink-like consistency, but then lots of people don't know what ink is like. Um, you just wanted a nice flowing juicy consistency and your pro tip for the evening i dipped my brush in water and there is water on the ferrule so i don't want to risk starting to paint and have that water run down the bristles and create a blob of water so touch your brush to your shop towel right where the ferrule and the bristles come together and that usually will take all of the excess moisture out of the brush and keep an accident from happening so with your brush loaded with paint that is a fluid consistency, I'm going to paint on some tendrils and I'm going to do this and not try to do it all in one motion of the brush. It can break, it can start, it can stop. But there you see my little tendril there and where it started is a little too much. So I'm going to kind of spit on the end of my little finger and just blot the back end of that so that you can see how that disappears now and is in a strong starting point. Let's put another little tendril down here. Then we're going to hold our brush with a handle pointed directly up at the ceiling. And once again, gently add our tendril. And again, it doesn't have to be a complete line. You can come back and paint over little areas if you think your color needs to be stronger. But if you practice with your liner brush, you will be able to paint nice thin lines and make your brush do exactly what you want your brush to do. If you don't practice, then the brush does exactly what it wants to do and you are not in control. All right, so there's another little tendril down there. And let's put another one on for good measure. And I've not picked up any more paint since I started. So you can get quite a bit done with one filling of the brush. All right, and I'm just going back and touching this to make this line a little bit bolder here and there. Okay, so that's enough little tendrils on there. We don't want this to look like it's a grapevine, but I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to pick up some of that lighter green color, the first green that we used on our leaves, and I'm going to thin that with water till it's a nice flowing consistency. And once again, I'm going to touch where the bristles and the ferrule meat. Just touch that right on the corner of a paper towel to avoid an accident. Now I'm going to come back and highlight some of these little tendrils and of where I think they're a little bit bolder or where they would pick up a little bit of light. And I'm not doing the entire tendril at all. all right, so there you can see where I've added those extra light areas on there. Just a little bit fancy, uh, a little bit, um, a little bit more interesting tendril when you've got some light and darker areas on it. And of course, you can eliminate this if you feel uncomfortable in doing it. Don't want you to stress yourself. Painting, painting should be enjoyable but you should practice so that you can do this without any trouble. So that one has been highlighted and you can see that it's much more interesting than this one, the one with the highlight and the one without. So let's come up here and add some highlights to this one. And it just adds that extra touch to these little tendrils and those of you who love detail will be in heaven doing this. All 
All right, so we've highlighted all of those tendrils. And you can sign your name to this. I would recommend uh, varnishing your painting with a high gloss varnish. I like a spray varnish and the highest gloss I can stand. I think it makes your paints look much better and it really does bring out the uh, folk art matte acrylic paints. So folks, this is Dylan's Delight. And I wanna thank you all for joining us tonight and look forward to seeing uh, your paintings. If you want to, you may post them on the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group using the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. Also, hashtag your works with Make It with Michaels. And we look forward to seeing you in another Michaels class. So take care, everybody. Good night.